you a little bit more insight in how it is to live in a disaster prone area like the area around Naples where the Campi Fligrei are located, a large caldera that has last had a major eruption 40,000 years ago and has massively affected the Mediterranean but also the whole world because of all the ashes that got into the atmosphere has definitely changed um, the weather. I know it's not the weather, it's the word with C, but as you might have noticed in my last word, I was mentioning that C word that many people are now discussing is changing. And I was only talking about that that last eruption created how they call it uh, when a volcano does that, a little ice age, which has nothing to do with the other change. But I got a light blue banner underneath my other video from... Google and uh, educating people about the sea change and who causes it and fossil fuels and humans and gave a note and a click where you could educate uh, yourself about that and uh, I don't like that if people want to educate themselves about stuff like that um, great but I don't want to force anything upon anybody in my videos, underneath my videos. And I've also filed um, a complaint that I want that gone because it has, I explained to them, I'm talking about what happens when nature changes that sea thing, a volcano changes that. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, I know I got a lot of comments, many viewers felt disturbed and they said, why are you talking about the sea change, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what are they talking about? I don't know. And then I clicked on my own video on another computer and then I saw that blue banner and I'm like, oh, wow, okay, um, I, I get it now. So that's not the topic of my videos and it's not the topic of today's video. I wanna give you an insight. How do you feel? as a local resident. Many of you might know how it feels to be in a disaster prone area. If you live in a tornado alley, hurricanes, earthquakes. Um, but you know, if you live there and you know it could erupt at any minute, but maybe it won't. So what do you do? And the government is planning to update evacuation routes, but in the close proximity around that caldera, people are living there up to the edge of that caldera. So there's about 500,000 people in direct proximity that would need to be evacuated within a very, very, very short period of time. If you compare it with the potential eruption that was supposed to happen in Grindavik in Iceland, they evacuated that little town. It's about between 3,000 500 to 4,000 people calmly within 20 minutes. But, you know, this is Naples area with no major escape routes. So tiny, tiny roads that can get clogged. We have seen what happened and when people wanted to get out of Kiev in Ukraine when the bombs were coming close to the city. The whole one road highway that went out of the city was clogged. People could not get on it anymore. The cars were standing and history has shown that even in, in the, the World War II in Europe, when people were trying to get out of the cities, it was clogged, the major roads. So it's not that easy and this has an effect on the residents. And you know, if you've seen the headline on my thumbnail, this is something serious. And I, I want to explain to you why this is happening and what is happening. So stay tuned, guys. Residents around the Campi Flegri Caldera are saying they're living in fear. And I want to show you this a little bit from the perspective of a 62-year-old man who says... In the caldera, in that area where there's still a lot of hot steam coming out and a lot of sulfur, you can see yellow rocks, they used to put eggs in tinfoil as kids and put them on the ground 
of this volcanic area and ball the X there. But today, this area has woken up and is still awakening and experts are not sure to what degree it will awaken. I talked in my last video about the worst case scenario, um, what will happen if it fully erupts. There'll be food shortages all over the world because of that little ice age that can be caused by the ashes everywhere. And so from his perspective, what is happening with his hometown and with the area that he grew up in? His hometown of Potsuli has been spooked by a 4.2 magnitude quake in October, and that was the biggest in 40 years. And that has spooked half a million residents, but they had thousands of earthquakes as of recently. And so he says, he sleeps, his name is Colato. He sleeps with an emergency bug out bag underneath his bed because he lives at the heart of Campi Flegre. It's called Flegrean Fields in English. Houses there are bordered by one side by this flat volcanic terrain. And on the other side, there is the picturesque port of Pozzuoli. And as children, he and his friends they went to play in that area and as i said they were cooking eggs and from the ridge where the smell of sulfur is very very strong they would look across the monte nuovo it's called new mountain and among the plumes of volcanic gases that would rise from the soil there that monte nuovo was formed in the last major eruption that's why it's called monte nuovo that means new mountain that last eruption was in 1538. So he is very sure that if the Campi Flegrei erupts again, the little town of Pozzuoli will fall into the sea. He says, we live in a constant state of an anxiety. People cannot sleep and the slightest tremor and they run. And that volcano that is west of Naples is really large. It measures like 12 to 15 kilometers. That is 7.4 by 9.3 miles sort of thing. And it is an active caldera. And this is like left hollow after an eruption. And this is the largest caldera in Europe. And it is stretching from the outskirts of Naples into the sea. The whole region is called Campania region and is better known for the nearby Vesuvius volcano that has wiped out Pompeii 79 AD. Everything was covered in ashes and the town went under and there even are like bodies that were formed into stone. Um, so Campi Flegri does not have such a distinctive volcanic history, but it should not be underestimated because its eruption 40,000 years ago was the Mediterranean's most powerful one, affecting the seaward worldwide. And despite this, the area has been densely populated for thousands of years due to its mild climate, the fertile land and hot springs, which once attracted holidaying Roman emperors that were there and had vacation and enjoyed the area. They had a party town there named Bayai, and that town fell victim to Brady Sizem. That is basically when hydrothermal activity causes an area to gradually lift or descend. So that town is now underwater. And that little port in the little town of Pozzuoli, where our 62-year-old resident Colato did swim as a child, has now been transformed into a mud flat. So the stone steps that once led to fishing boats are now ending in mid-air. So he says he has a dog that starts barking before every quake. And he says people are so scared. People have so much anxiety that it could start at any minute. And there were like thousands of thousands of quakes and it wears them out. And he says there has been a big increase 
in people taking anti-anxiety drugs. But they're not only taking them just because they're afraid of an earthquake or a potential eruption. They are very, very afraid of a potential evacuation because they know what a chaos this will create. They have fear that there is a magma pool underneath their houses. But one resident, he's already 78 years old, and he says it will be chaos when we have to evacuate. We will entrust ourselves to God. What is the emergency plan that the government has in place? The region's emergency plan in case of the predicted eruption allows three days for people to leave the area themselves or with assistance. But residents fear immediate deadlock in the town's narrow streets. So the locals know whose houses have been damaged in the recent quakes but many are not reporting it because they have fear that they are forced to move out. And a resurgence of seismic activity in the early 1980s led to the evacuation of 40,000 inhabitants, and many in Pozzuoli still bear those psychological scars, and they are so afraid to do it again. And my heart breaks for them. It's so very sad that you have to take and the anxiety medication just to be able to live in your own home, in your hometown, the place where you should feel safe. And if you have seen my other videos about the town of Grindavik, the residents there have been shaken by thousands of earthquakes. And they say, if I hear a door rattle, I'll, I'll, I'm in panic, I'll just run. So they might face the same problems, sadly. And when Pozzuoli and the area around the caldera was evacuated in the 80s, one resident says it was a ghost town. So this resident was evacuated along with his residents and they spent three years in temporary accommodation. Now compare this to Iceland. Residents are being told they probably cannot move back to their town before summer, but that might change because that area there also just woke up and it could remain active decades, even 300 years. So what does that mean for the residents, guys? It's very, very scary. Evacuation plan for the immediate area around the caldera um, is divided there's a red zone you can see it here on the map and it is divided into segments and each of those segments has been paired with another region in Italy that should be ready to host evacuees and the residents of Pozzuoli are destined for Lombardy that's a wealthy landlocked region in northern Italy and it's home to the metropolis of Milano so our guy Colato, he says that moving him north from his homeland would kill him twice. And another guy says he would be proud to die in his home area. And gosh, that's sad, guys. And they're saying not everyone feels the same. There's another resident, she's just 37 years old, and she says, me and my parents, we would leave tomorrow if we could, but they can't afford to leave. So that's another problem. If you have your house and maybe you have a mortgage there, you just can't leave. You can just say, I, I buy another one, even rent another one. That's also a problem that the residents of Grindavik are just facing. Pay, they, they still have to pay their mortgages insurances and everything on the homes that they can't live in. It's crazy. And you know, officials are saying people should not be afraid. Always say rather they should be, but only when we say so. Well, that is great because you know, the best volcanologists and, and scientists in the world say, we don't know that much about what's going on inside our Earth. We know more about the surface of the moon. So predictions are somewhat vague. They are not precise. So they can tell you today nothing's going to happen. And then tomorrow, oopsie, right? 
So it's a very scary situation and I feel for the residents like both in Iceland and here in Italy. So I, I wanted to give you a closer insight in that and I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did guys, it would be awesome if you could subscribe to my channel and leave this video a like. And I hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. I'll put two here in the end screen. Maybe that is interesting for you. I would love to see you there. And until then, stay safe, be prepared, be informed, do not look away. Don't say, well, I can't change things. There's always something that you can do. And even if it's just as little as get some supplies, some water, some food that gets you through the first weeks of a disaster, anywhere in the world, wherever you are. And uh, thank you for watching, guys. Bye-bye.